So hi, everyone. I'm Derek. Um, and I'm here to talk about uh, Rocketnetes, which, uh, as you'll see, is our efforts to add support for an additional container runtime to Kubernetes. Uh, before I get into that, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I started working at CoreOS in September 2015, so last fall. And I'm working on the Rocket teams, you know, everything Rocket and apps here related. And I'm the creator of AC Build, is probably my most notable thing I've made since starting. It's the build system for AppC uh, container images. So the files that you know, Rocket actually downloads and runs when it goes to run its own uh, native containers. So jumping right into it, uh, I have uh, some background on you know, what Rocket is, why you would use it for those of you in the audience who are unfamiliar. So Rocket's a CLI for running app containers on Linux. Um, it has three main focuses on security, security composability, and standards slash compatibility. And so basically, the, the idea is this is just a binary on your system. You run it, you hand it a container name, and it'll you know, go out, download the image, run it, same as Docker works. So how Rocket focuses on security. Uh, first and foremost, GPG signatures are required for any images that Rocket goes to import to its store, rather off the local disk or over the network. Um, so you need to have, it uses this to provide cryptographic guarantees about you know, where your images have come from and if they haven't been modified in transit. And Rocket can also use SE Linux contexts. So if you have some application and you know, someone manages to break into it and take it over, uh, SE Linux can be used to, to provide an additional like, layer of defense to prevent them from you know, actually damaging things on the host. And it, Rocket also supports running the containers inside of a little uh, lightweight hypervisor. So if, again, you're a little scared about what if someone can break into this, you can effectively run your container inside of just a ephemeral virtual machine. Um, and then they'd need to break out of the virtual machine instead of just you know, break out of the Linux namespaces. <clears throat> and also a support for doing uh, TPM measurements, which can be used to effectively as a little chip on your motherboard uh, that can provide uh, cryptographically uh, verifiable like uh, uh, audit logs for you know, exactly what applications you've uh, been running. And so about composability, um, Rockets uh, has a big focus on integrating really well with uh, init systems. So if you want to you know, run your application uh, and start up with like a systemd unit or an upstart script or you know, whatever init system you're using, uh, it's really trivial to do so in Rocket because um, Rocket doesn't fork, it doesn't call off to some daemon. It just, the process that you call to you know, actually execute the container is the process the container runs in. And it also aims to work well with other, pro other projects like container orchestration, for example, which is what this talk is focusing on. Um, and a really uh, big thing that Rocket does is has this concept of a stage one, which is a swappable component that actually runs the container. So when you ask Rocket, hey, I need to run this like Apache PHP app, uh, Rocket goes up to one of these stage ones and says, I'm, please run this for the user. And the idea is that because this is a swappable component, you can have different implementations for how to actually run these containers. The default one just uses Linux namespaces, same as Docker works. So you know, you got your PID namespace, network namespace, and you're sharing a kernel, it's Linux, Linux containers. But, and then this is how the VM thing I mentioned works. There's also an LKVM stage one. And when Rocket goes up to this stage one, it's like, I need you to run this Apache web app for me. Um, it spins up a little KVM process and a little virtual machine cop, you know, with a separate Linux kernel, you know, sep like separate hardware emulation. So it's uh, you know, not, not traditionally what Linux containers are, but you know, it's a cool idea. And then you can also turn the knob the other way, where if you're like, I don't care about isolation at all, I just want a consistent environment to run it in. There's also a true stage one that we call Rocket Fly. So you know, there's, there's no namespacing or you know, isolation between anything. And this is useful if you want to run a process like, such as the kubelet that need, needs to manage like mounts on the host or something like that. And you know, you'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and so that for standards and compatibility, Rocket's an implementation of AppC, which is a well-defined uh, like container runtime specification that we made. So if you want to know how does Rocket um, like go and actually perform image discovery, what environment variables is sent inside the thing, instead of needing to read our docs or uh, worse, digging through the source code to figure out how it works, you can just go read the specification. And Rocket also uses CNI, which stands for the Container Networking Interface for its networking, which is common plumbing uh, being used by a lot of other projects. You know, uh, another just a way to provide interoperability with other things in the ecosystem. And Rocket can also run Docker images. So we're not tied to our uh, AppC container images. Um, if you have you know, a good workflow with like, you know, your continuous delivery, you really like your Docker files, you put a lot of love into them, um, you can just throw your Docker images at Rocket and it should just work. And Rocket in the future will also be fully OCI compliant. So yeah, and just a quick note on CNI, it's used by all these other uh, com you know, projects. So Rocket, Kerma, Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, Weave, and so on, so on, and just an example config. But yeah, so let's talk about Kubernetes. 
Uh, Kubernetes is cluster level container orchestration. So what this means, it's a project, you install it in all your nodes, and you can go up to it and be like, Kubernetes, I need to run three of these web apps. And it'll pick three nodes and it'll run the web apps on them. Um, and it can also handle failure recovery. So if one of the nodes that just schedule that web on, app on five minutes just goes up in flames, it can just pick another node, push the app over there. So yeah. So the actual point of this talk, Rocket Netties. Uh, Rocket Netties is, has been our efforts to add support for Rocket as the container runtime to Kubernetes. And so in this scheme, Rocket handles everything that Docker would, which is you know, image discovery, which is if you say I need to run Nginx, how do you actually turn that into a URL to go and find where the image is? Image fetching, so downloading it over the network, and pod, ex pod execution, which is you know, the actual running of the application. And so the way we went about this is there's a couple points, uh, there's a couple facets to this. But so uh, there's a part of Kubernetes called the kubelet, which is a daemon that runs on, it's the daemon that runs on the nodes. You know, it talks to the master, figures out what should be running, watches the pods as they run, and so on. Um, so in the past, the kubelet would just always talk to the Docker daemon to figure out, uh, is this pod still alive? Hey, I need you to fetch this, you know, so on, so on. Um, so with our changes, we, the first thing is we created an API server for Rocket. So it's a daemon that you run on your machine, but it provides a read-only API, so you can't do anything like stateful, you can't like fetch images or like execute images through it. And the point being that we now have a versioned, easier to access programmatically like API that Kubernetes can use to like ask information about what's currently running on the host. And the kubelet also uh, will then directly execute Rocket when it needs to do preparatory tasks like, hey, please fetch this image or hey, please prepare this pod for running. And then when it's time to actually run the image, it talks to systemd directly on the host. Um, so, you know, just the containers, instead of being a child of some daemon running on the host, they're just directly childs of PID1, um, which provides some benefits. Notably, there's no daemon on the host actually running the containers. And so you can pick any daemon on the host and just, if you need to upgrade it or do, do something or it crashes, you can just restart it and you don't need to worry about all your containers all of a sudden dying. And what this means is you can also do live upgrades of your container runtime now. If you want to you know, upgrade the version of Rocket you're using, you can just put the new binary on the host and then go one by one restarting your uh, containers and as they come back up again, they'll be using the new version of Rocket. So you, know, you don't need to bring anything down. If something goes horribly wrong, you can still, hopefully you'll catch it soon. You'll have a lot of your containers still running in the old version. And this also provides a path to a generic container runtime API for Kubernetes because now that there are multiple container runtimes implemented in Kubernetes, we can figure out what parts of them, the implementations are common and pull them out into a more you know, general abstract way. So the next time container runtime comes along, it'll be a lot easier to implement. And the stage ones, as I described, provides a lot more flexibility for you know, what types of things you can run. So if like, there's some application that, again, needs to ma manage mounts on the host, for example, um, you can just start up a Kubernetes daemon set, which will run it on every single node in your cluster, and just run it in the true stage one. And then it's not namespaced away and can you know, do what it needs. So if you're interested, uh, for when can I use this? It's going to be include, we're aiming for this to be included in Kubernetes 1.3, which we're hoping to land in late June. And right now we're passing over 90% of the common end-to-end -end tests that you know, Kubernetes provides. So it's pretty usable in its current state. So we're not 100% yet, but it's, at least for my demo, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, works pretty well. And if you're curious now, getting started guide is in the Kubernetes docs. But there's a link. So let's just, let's just see how this works. Yeah, so I've got four virtual machines running on this, uh, Kubernetes master, and then three worker nodes. And I just started this up with the kube up script provided in the Kubernetes repo. Um, it just talks to libre on the host, sets up the machines. And I uh, tweaked their cloud configs, so when it starts the kubelet, it passes in specific flags to tell it to use Rocket as a container runtime instead of Docker. And let's see here. I assume you guys can see that in the back. Okay, so yeah, I've got uh, cube control. So yeah, here's my worker nodes. Um, you know, three of them, they're all ready, it's good. And if we look at what pods I'm currently running. If I can actually call the right thing. Um, it's a little too big. Yeah, you'll see I've got, uh, I've deployed to Tectonic Console. Uh, on this Kubernetes cluster. So up over here. So here's Tectonic. We've got kubedns and Tectonic console. And this works fine. You can see the different pods as you run, what services you're running. And let's, let's just go ahead and 
deploy something on here. So I'm going to deploy the guestbook example, which it. So we'll go through, it'll create all of the different uh, things that we need. And if we hop over into um, uh, Tectonic, we shouldn't see them come up. So yeah, they now all started running. And if we find the service, so the front end is running on this IP address. Just going to. And I'm just going to make a SSH bridge to get me into the flannel network. And if everything goes, that's the wrong port. And here's a guest book. So, So you can run, uh, as I've demonstrated, just, you know, this works the same as any normal Kubernetes cluster. You can just call kubectl, you can just create pods, you can inspect things, um, you can get logs, you can exec into them. And because this is Rocket, uh, we actually have, you know, journal CTL, machine CTL integration. So let's, let's go see how that works. Uh, so now we're on this, we're on uh, the first worker node. What if I do rocket list. Yeah, you'll see here the apps are running. Um, here's the, the Redis slave, Tectonic console, and one of the front end apps. So if we just look at this front end, um, I'm going to just find the, so here's the systemd unit that is running the container. And we can just journal CTL, grab the logs for it. And here's all of the, you know, Apache logs, and if I just refresh this a bunch, I should hopefully see more requests in here. Yep, or maybe not. No, they're, they're hitting somewhere. Uh, probably one of the other worker nodes. But yeah, and we can also, if we just machine CTL, we can see we're running uh, two, uh, you know, rocket containers on, on this machine. This is just systemd stuff. Uh, yeah, and you can get the full status for the machine. So here's all the different processes that are running inside of there, um, some of the logs for it. And uh, it looks like I grabbed the uh, Redis slave. So yeah. Uh, okay, that took uh, nowhere near as long as I thought it would. Uh, anyone have any questions at this point? Uh, yeah? Uh, when you uh, run this Kubernetes, does it always mean that you call uh, namespace mode? Um, so the question is, when you r run this, is it always in the default namespace mode? And I believe you're talking about the stage ones in Rocket? Okay, okay. Um, yes, so by default, it'll always use whatever the default stage one is, which is the namespacing uh, stage one. Um, right now, we have experimental support, which will hopefully not be experimental by the time Kubernetes 1.3 lands, where you can put annotations on the pods as you run them um, to specify, I want this to use you know, a specific stage one that I have available. I'm wondering in the case of the network, will it still support the Yeah, um, all the different stage ones will support CNI. Or well, the true stage one is a little weird because there's no network namespace, so it'll just be running on the host's network, but the rest of them will support CNI. Because you, know, you can't set up a different network if it's on the host. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah? Um, you had mentioned that uh, one of the stage ones is lightweight KVM. Um, so what's lightweight about it? Is it? Does it just use the virtualization extensions for CPU and memory isolation? Uh, what about for I.O.? Is it still using QMU? I, I believe, yes, I believe that's the case. Um, when I say lightweight, I mostly mean it's like ephemeral. Um, it doesn't like stay around. It, it has the same lifespan a normal container would. I see. And is there any capability of, since it's a VM on its own, is it possible to treat it as a pod and run multiple containers within there? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And do I need to do anything special to enable this or? Um, just use the LKVM stage one. It should okay. be the only thing that you need. Cool, thanks. Uh, yeah. 
a second ago you were showing us the journal CTL logs. Does kubectl logs just work as well? Uh, they should. Let's double check that. Uh, so if I grab just one of the front ends here, and uh, I don't remember the exact same. Yeah. Yeah, so there's your kubectl logs. Hmm? Uh, I think exec works. Just trying to remember how to exec. Uh, okay, just give it a pod. Well, they didn't like that. Let's just uh, not look at that. Okay, next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Still like fault. Okay. Um, any other questions? No? Okay. Well, that ended way earlier than I thought it would. No. Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>